Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, today is going to be a, a small tutorial on a ripped canvas. But a little backstory. Um, because I spend my time between Los Angeles and London, I've been in London for 25 years. Uh, that's where I developed my art career. And essentially, um, I'm now, right now, in uh, California, where my parents reside. And uh, because they're quite elderly, they need primary care. So, uh, long story short, I had to figure out how to move some of my stuff here so I would be able to work both here in California and in London, England. Um, the daunting task meant hiring international movers, which ended up damaging one of my paintings. I have to say the movers were lovely and helpful. However, sometimes things do happen. But in the case of a canvas, you have to know how to save a painting and essentially keep at it. You go into your arsenal, and you hope for the best. And with some of my stuff still in London, I had to make do with what I had present in California. So here's what we'd used. Hope you like it. So I started with finding a swatch uh, from uh, my Dutch linen that I had in my studio here and measured it out to, to virtually give liberal amount to the back of the canvas for support. Then I started to actually use the gesso on the swatch to, to apply that liberally and let that get tacky for a bit while I actually prep the other side of the canvas. Now, what you should always try to do is look at the grades and the fibers of the actual canvas and when applying the gesso to go along within the grains of the tear along with that so virtually Try not to fray it anymore, but go within the grooves of <clears throat> the canvas. Essentially, what you want to do is get as maximum support when applying the actual canvas swatch to the back of the painting. This is very crucial and virtually allow for it to virtually get tacky and virtually have equal amount of support and weight to it. Now, when you're doing this, you should be mindful that it can seep out to the the other side of the canvas and additional to the painting. So you want to have some sort of protection to protect the painting or some sort of soft surface to cushion the blow. Now normally when I'm doing this, I tend to have some washi kozo paper with me and I thought I did and I don't. So I had to make do with what I have here in California as opposed to London. Um, and with gesso, you have a very good uh, chance of virtually sticking with the classic form of this. Uh, so luckily the tires weren't too bad, but it's always um, uh, crucial that you virtually work in a well-ventilated room and essentially, uh, for my theory, is to use impasto uh, liquid so you get uh, you build your paint up like a molding paste to virtually build up and smooth out the front end of the canvas. Now, because I paint quite expressionist-like, um, I can get away with a lot of gestures to build up the textures to virtually cover up where the eye would normally see the tears initially. Just make sure that you take your time and just have fun with this in a sense. You're virtually building on your work. Uh, also, you're trying to learn and virtually make something that is going to last a lifetime for this. This is no time to actually skimp on actual paint. So, like I said, if you have a really good quality acrylic, uh, try to stick within those color tones to build up. You don't have to virtually go out and break the bank, but having that does help virtually anchor and save the painting for a lifetime. Now, I know you guys are wondering, who the hell is that over there in Harpo? Who this woman? Well, that's me. So, yeah, it's a self-portrait <clears throat> of myself and my ugly mug. So, get over it.
One thing I want to say about uh, liquid impasto is that it is an alkyd resin, um, alkyd resin. So it is also um, a petroleum uh, distillate mix, uh, combination. So you should actually use this in a well ventilated room. Um, I would give this about, uh, I would 70, 72 to uh, six day uh, curing period. Now, Liquid Original is more of a petroleum uh, distillate and it has a much smoother consistency. So I'm just talking out of my ass right now, but um, when you're color matching your paints, make sure that you know which are your cool tones and your hot tones for the painting and to virtually try to match it as close as possible. Obviously, um, if you made notes about the, the type of paints that you use or if you have a particular palette that you're always using, you should actually be able to know to, uh, to visualize how you're gonna match it. And from that, um, I hope this helps you with this simple tutorial. Make sure to click, uh, Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and hit the bell notification to virtually help the algorithm get this freaking channel moving. I need some likes and some followers to virtually help a brother out. So I thank you for coming and sharing this time with me. So I will see you soon. All right, subscribe. All right, bye.